Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah wa rahman wa rahim. So we move on to the next chapter uh, of our curriculum. And alhamdulillah, we've finished the the first sort of half of the curriculum, which is, uh, if you remember, it's Nahu. And now we can move on to the second half, which is called Sarf, which is uh, in English is morphology. And this means to assign meanings to words through patterns and endings. So another way of saying it is like you take one word and from that one word you can make many different words and that's what sarf is. So if we move on to the uh, understanding sarf. So sarf is used to construct many words with different meanings from a single word and the meanings are connected in some form or fashion. Uh, there's two types of words. One is called a mushtaq and words which sarf can be done on and these are most Arabic words and the other is jamid and these are the words which sarf cannot be done on. So every Arabic word has root letters and this is something that I have discussed uh, in previous chapters but a little bit more detail now. So most words have three root letters and it's called uh, jizrun. So the first letter is called the fa kalimata and the second root letter is called the ain kalimata and the third root letter is called the lam kalimata that's where we use fa ain and lam when we in in our examples so it's fa ala so these three root letters are used to construct other words with different meanings which have a connection to one another so here's an example so three root letters uh, the dad the ra and the ba which if you put fatah on all of them, so it becomes daraba, it means he hit. Yadribu means he is hitting. Darbun means hitting. And daribun is the one who hits. And madrubun is the one who is hit. So if you see in each case, the three root letters are, are there, they're present. But you know, different things have been, uh, different sort of letters are added or slightly different construction. But the three root letters are still there in each case. And you have a slightly different meaning created. So every three uh, root letters can be put into a specific family to create many different words with similar meanings. Other letters and harakata are often added to the three root letters. So every family, which is called al-babu, includes the following parts. So we have um, the past tense fail, which is a fail madi. The present slash future tense fail called the fail udare, uh, the passive past tense the fail um, madi magni ulil majul, the passive present tense fail fail udare magni ulil majul, the commanding fail which is the fail amr, the forbidding fail which is the fail nahi, uh, the idea uh, which is a master and it's an ism, uh, and the ism uh, ismu fail which is the doer of the action, and again it's an ism. And the isme maful, which is the thing the action is done to, or the one the action is done to, and again it's an ism. And the ismu zarf, uh, which is the time and place the action takes place. And again it's an ism. So we note that four isms and six fails. And many of these we've actually done, we've discussed in previous chapters. So each family has uh, each family part, which is called a, sagi, a sega, uh, follows a particular pattern which applies to any three root layers which are constructed in that family. So what that means is that each family has a template that it follows. So if you insert any three root layers into that family, then that template will apply. So if you can memorize the template, then you can apply any three root layers to that template to form the different, to form these different family parts. So example here, um, there's three root letters in each case. And then uh, on, the, on the right side, we've added uh, into a specific family and it's shown in the present future tense. So if, if the first one is the, the ain, the lam and the mim, and then that becomes yata allamu, for example. And then fasada is yata fasadu. And sala, seen lam and meme yata sallamu, and the ra, meme and the qaf yata, yata rammaku. So, in each case, you can see that this is a specific family these three root letters have been put into. And you know, you can see the different cases, like 
for example, is explained here. So these words have been constructed for understanding purposes. They're not necessarily real Arabic words. So in each case, the first two letters with the same harakat remain in each case. You can see the ya and the ta because this is a specific family and every specific family has a template. So in this template, the ya and the ta is always there at the start. It's, uh, depending on what version or form we're talking about. So this is the present tense we're talking about. So the ya and the ta is always there, which is blue highlight. The shadda remains on the second to last letter, which is the um, second root letter, uh, with the same fatta on it in each case, which is the green highlight. So if you look at the second root letter, so the first one is the lam, the second word is the seen, the third one is lam, and the last one is meme. That's the second root letter. And in each case, the second root letter, which is the second to last letter, gets a shadda and a fatah. And that's highlighted in green. And in each case, the last letter has a dhamma on it, which is purple highlight. So the last third root letter, the third root letter, which is the last letter, has a dhamma on it in each case. So only the three, three root letters have been exchanged in each case, but the pattern remains the same. So this approach applies to all the different families. But each family has its own pattern with specific characteristics which the members within that family follow. So you have to understand and memorize each family and the characteristics that it follows, which produces a specific template for that family. So there's two types of families. One is the small families called the Mujarrad and the big families called the Mazid Dufi. So the small families, the Mujarrad ones, in the Huwa, past tense uh, version only the three root letters are present but the harakat may vary so the harakat on the three letters might be different but this uh, but in the huwa past tense version it's always gonna only show three the three root letters for so the examples here is daraba uh, that's he hit which is a past tense huwa version and alima which means he knows and against that's the huwa past tense version and bauda which means he was distant or it was distant. And again, that's the Huwa past tense version. But in each case, only the three root letters are present. No other letters have been added. But you can see the harakat can be different. So in the first one, it's all fata. In the second one, you know, you've got one kasra. And in the third the third example, ba'uda, you have one dhamma there. The small families have extra family parts, which the big families don't have. So they take the same form across all the subfamilies. So the first is called the ismu ala, which is a tool or device for doing the action. So for example, if you hit to hit, then you can, there is a tool to hit, meaning a stick, for example. And the pattern it follows is, uh, it, it, can, it comes in three different forms, the ismu alat, uh, alatan, alatin, and the pattern it follows is mif'alun and remember the fa is the first root letter, the ain is the second root letter and the lam is the third root letter. So you can exchange those three with any other three root letters and this pattern still applies. So mif'alun is the, the first version of the ismu alatin, the second is mif'alun and the third is mif'alatun. Uh, the second extra family part we find in the small families is the ismu taftil, which if you remember it's the a comparative uh, and it's connected to the superlative as well um, and it's an ism and it always follows if you remember the af alu pattern so the the first root letter is far second is ain the third is lam you can just switch those out for any through three other root letters and it's it follows the pattern af alu and then you have uh, ismu sifa which is an adjective for permanent qualities so it's a descriptive word but usually it describes permanent qualities and it's an ism and it usually follows the patterns of fa'ilun or fa'ilun. And then the ismu mubalaga, and this is a magnified version of the dua, the ism, ismu fa'il, the ismu fa'il. And again, it's an ism, so it's a magnified version, or hyperbole. And it follows all of these, uh, it, can, it can appear in all of these forms. So the fa'alun, fa'lanu, um, fa'ulan, uh, fa'ulun, and Fi'ilun and Fu'ulun. So you can follow any one of these. Uh, and the big families, the Mazidu Fi, they have extra letters are always added to the three root letters in every form. 
you'll see extra uh, extra letters added to the three rulers. So as per usually at the uh, per usual at the end of every chapter, we always advise to go over the vocabulary list vocabulary, vocabulary list chapter at the end of this book. Ideally, at the end of every session, this curriculum is studied, so that your Arabic grammar knowledge increases with your vocab knowledge. Inshallah.